So this is the second part of your geriatric skills lab lecture and we are reviewing common problems in the older adult. On the next couple of slides we will be looking at skin lesions, insulin resistance syndrome, diabetes mellitus, drug and alcohol abuse. With uh, prolonged exposure to sun with geriatric in, in the geriatric patient, there are many different skin lesions to be aware of as you're interacting with them. The first one is xanthalsma, which is a fatty deposit on the eyelid. Acrocordon are skin tags that are flesh colored. Ectictic keratosis is the normal aging growths that are precancerous and they can look like colored plaques. Seborrheic keratosis are benign wart like lesions. Cherry angiomas are vascular lesions, they're tiny red spots. Senile purpura are also vascular lesions, they're fragile blood vessels, red to purple spots, and essentially are ruptured capillaries. And colitis, chelitis, excuse me, is an angular stomatitis, and it can be due to increased saliva, so side of the mouth, if the um, person is drooling a lot, then you would see that. On this slide, I have also included signs and symptoms of cancer. And you're looking at the symmetry, the border of the lesion, the color and diameter. With insulin resistance syndrome, this is a complex disorder with relating symptoms. This um, diagnosis is comorbidities, I should say, listed, obesity, heart disease, hypertension, gout, polycystic ovaries, have a common link of increasing the risk of diabetes, mellitus, and heart disease. Insulin resistant syndrome also is often referred to as metabolic syndrome. This is a hyperinsulin results in elevated blood sugars causing hypoglycemia if meals are delayed, and it increases production of the adrenal hormones. So you'll see an elevated heart rate and tremors. These people have an increased incidence of atherosclerosis, gout, and have an increased risk for, again, heart disease. Let's look at diabetes mellitus now. Incidence in the population over 65 is somewhere around 16.7%. Prevalence the rate does increase in the male population more so than females. Non-Caucasians are 20% more likely to develop the disease. And the Pima, American and Canadian Indian group, have a 50% rate of diabetes. It is often genetically linked with them and it's related to also nutritional factors. Other contributing factors include an increased fat intake with diets, higher calorie diets, and a sedentary lifestyle. Diabetes is diagnosed with a random blood sugar greater than 200, or also hemoglobin A1C, and hemoglobin A1C shows the glucose that's stored in hemoglobin, and it's a 120 day look back period which we know is the life of the red blood cell and so with this test we are seeing a look back at sugar levels for uh, that length, longer length of time the picture I've included in this slide shows you the symptoms of diabetes polydipsia, polyphagia, so increased thirst, increased hunger, and increased urination, polyuria, are the most common signs associated with it. 
We know that with diabetes mellitus, there is a decrease insulin production or cells becoming re resistant, increasing the sugar in the bloodstream. And this is actually what makes the person thirsty. All right, so that is diabetes mellitus. There is a higher prevalence of drug and alcohol abuse in the elderly population that can frequently go unnoticed. Specifically, they've identified that 17% are affected with drug and alcohol abuse. A nutritional assessment should be done. You want to um, check their protein intake. Um, also assess the f what types of food are they eating. And you should also be observing any changes in personal appearance. I have put up some clinical and lab criteria that are related to specifically alcohol abuse and you can see them here as far as bilirubin, albumin, and the prothrombin time. So we know that the liver produces albumin, which helps to maintain interstitial and vascular fluid levels. And if an individual has alcohol-induced liver failure, you will see diminished albumin levels and resulting swelling and ascites in that individual. The associated elevated bilirubin is related to red blood cell breakdown in the liver. Elevated bilirubin in a patient, if there are high levels, they will present with yellow sclera and their skin will be a jaundiced tone. Also, if liver function is impaired, there can be higher levels of ammonia, and that will re result in encephalopathy, which is swelling of the brain. Remember that a normal function of the liver is to convert ammonia to urea, which then is excreted by the kidneys, and as the liver becomes impaired, it cannot properly do that, and then resulting in damage to the brain. So that concludes my geriatric assessment. Thank you.